So guys, super excited to get into this portion of the course. This is where we start talking about how money is actually being created. Now, this is an absolute foundational course, so I really, really want you to pay attention to it. As we mentioned before, there's only one principle that the wealthy use to achieve financial freedom, okay? And that's the ability, obviously, to retire early. That's your ability to do whatever you want, whenever you want, for as long as you want, um, with whomever you want. That's the ultimate goal, right? If we don't have to go to work, we can go do whatever we want. We can travel the world. We can sit at home and just watch, watch Netflix, whatever it is. So how do we achieve that? There's only one way to achieve that, and that is to stop using this idea of exchanging your time to make money. You need to get out of that cycle. The, the, the poor among us, or, or most of America rather, lives paycheck to paycheck. That is a cycle of you going to work, making money to then earn income. You gotta stop that cycle. If you constantly, if you never stop that cycle, think about it folks, it's pretty straightforward. That means you're always gonna have to work. If you always have to work to get income, you can never retire. And remember, we want a state of fire, financial independence with the ability to retire early. So what that means is we gotta get ourselves out of the equation. So let's talk about how to do that. This concept was highlighted in the book, The Cash Flow Quadrant, A Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, by Robert Kiyosaki. I hope I got the name correctly. I would recommend you go, you go get those books. Now, I'm not necessarily saying he came up with this topic. To be honest, this concept has been used by wealthy people for decades and decades and decades before he was even around. He simply just made a great book about it and can explain it. I would highly recommend as a baseline, if you were only gonna purchase one book through this entire journey in this course, is to buy Rich Dad, Poor Dad, The Cash Flow Quadrant, download an Audible as we talked about. It's an amazing piece and a foundational piece to actually building wealth. When you start and understand that core principle, then everything else is just how do you use different things, different types of investments and different types of lifestyle to make sure that you reach to the point where you are no longer in the equation of making money. Let's dive in. Now, there are really four core ways that you can make money. There's nothing else beyond this. This is it, folks. There's, there's nothing else. Um, there's four ways. One, you can be an employee, and we all know about that because this is what our parents teach us. They teach us graduate high school, go to college, pick a good degree, be a doctor, be a nurse, be a whatever, so that you can get a good income. And if you get that good income, then what? You'll have a great lifestyle. You can buy, you can buy fancy things, get the BMW, get the Mercedes, right? So we have an employee. As an employee, it's very simple. You are exchanging time, your time for money. You go to work and you put in 40 hours a week, and what do you get? $20 an hour, so you get 800 bucks a week into your pocket, and that's great. And you can go use that money to pay for the stuff you need, your mortgage, your electric bill, and so forth. Make sense? And for a lot of people, if you're going in and you're working, you're working, they're thinking, hey, I'm working for my boss, right? And he's making a tremendous amount of money. I can go do this. If, if you are, uh, we use this example all the time, if you're a plumber, you might be thinking, they're only paying me 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour, but I, I see the invoices to these customers, you know, they're, they're charging them, you know, $100 an hour. That doesn't seem fair. I could just go on my own. What if I could go on my own? I could make, instead of maybe $25 an hour, maybe I could make $50 an hour, or $80 an hour. So as, as individuals, what do we do? We go out and we start this thing called self-employment. And for a lot of people, that's, that's even the goal. They're like, you know what? As an employee, I know I'm in this rat in the cycle. I know I'm living a paycheck to paycheck. What I need to do is I need to go start my own business. Most people, when they go start their own business, what do they do? They go into a trade that they know they know about, or they go into something they know about. Here's the problem, folks. If you are an employee, you're exchanging your time for money, right? 40 hours a week equals a paycheck. When you become self-employed, there's only one thing that happens. One, a lot more taxes, it's complicated. Two, liability. Um, there's a little bit of risk there, right? And, and as an employee, you're secure. You just clock in, you clock out, you know you're gonna have a job. On, with a self-employment, you gotta go get your own business. You gotta find leads. Who's gonna buy your product or service, right? But at the end of the day, you exchange time for money. This is still the same thing. Now, time for money over here is a little bit of money, $20 an hour. 
as a self-employed, as I just described, you change time for a little bit more money. And that starts to feel pretty good. But here's the problem, folks. How do you retire? How do you travel the world? How do you do what you want, when you want, for as long as you want, if you always gotta exchange your time, if you always have to be in the, in the equation? The point is, folks, you can't. So let's talk about the other way. Now this is the way, now you start to get into a, a sense where maybe you don't necessarily have to exchange your time for money. How do you do that? As a business owner. So in here, you're self-employed and technically as self-employed, you are, you are a business owner. You're making a little bit more, you're making a little bit of money, right? As a self-employed person, as a business owner, there's a slight shift to that in that definition. As a self-employed, you are working for yourself. Think of the plumber, right? That goes out and he's doing side side jobs at the end. You know, he's he's just it's just him in the one truck, right? He's self-employed. As a business owner, you have employees working for you. Okay? And now this is an important concept because when you have employees working for you, if you think about it, wait a minute, now you're starting to get to that idea of my time isn't being exchanged for money. Instead, your employee's time is being exchanged for money. So as an employee, your time equals money. As, as when you're self-employed, as you start getting in that business, time equals more money. But as you start a business, you hire employees and they work for you, right? You earn the margin. Think of the previous example, the plumber. You earn the margin of what you're paying your employee versus what you're paying your customer. There's profit there your employees are making you money. The problem is, is that as a business owner, you're kind of always have your toe in the water. So we own a restaurant and it runs pretty smoothly without us. I haven't been at, to the restaurant, I would say probably about, you know, I don't know, 60 days or so. But we always have to keep our toe in the water just a little bit. So as a business owner, while you can get into a status that you never have to come in, usually you never really get into that status where you can do what you want, whenever you want, for as long as you want, because you're always being tied to have to do something for the business, whatever it is. You get, like For example, you couldn't just you know go MIA for five years and come back and hope the business is, is, is there, right? So there's the one other st status then so that, that you need to get to in order to really get into that part of you know no longer being in the equation and just having money. And that is the principle of the rich. That's what they move to. And that principle is being an investor. With an investor, your money makes you other money. So the play there is, you know, we ever heard people say, hey, you need to, you need to have money to make money. You need money to make money. That's kind of true. You, do, you don't need money to make money, but you do need money to make you money in order to achieve financial freedom. So let's talk about that stage, right? Let's just recap real quick. As an employee, you're gonna make a little bit of money. You make $20 an hour. You go to work for 40 hours a week, you make $20 an hour. As a, as a self-employed person, you, you're basically doing the exact same thing, but maybe you're making a little bit more money. You're exchanging your $20 an hour, now maybe you make $40 an hour, $60 an hour for whatever that service or product it is that you're selling or providing. As a business owner, you start to do a different thing and you actually hire employees. And when you hire those employees, you're earning the spread. So you're charging your customer or maybe 60 bucks for that labor and you're paying your employee 20, 25 for labor and you're getting the spread of that. So it is actually your employees that are making money. Most of us are subject to that, right? And then the final one is to be an investor, which is really, you're not having anything. There's no sort of work or sweat equity putting into it. Instead, it's just simply your money making money. Now, we all know about this idea of investor because you actually live it every single day. Now, some of you probably already have a 401k or an IRA or something like that. And that's that concept. You're taking a little bit of your check, you're putting it into somewhere, probably into the stock market, into some type of mutual fund where you're getting a return on investment. So you understand that the little bit of money that you're putting in there right now starts to build over time through compounded interest and it's going to pay you out later. So that when you reach 60, when you reach 65, you'll have a nice nest egg there that you can start to withdraw that money and that money is obviously, it continues to accumulate money. If you don't have a 401k or an IRA, it doesn't matter if you're working at all, you also already understand this concept because the idea of a investor is simple. It's just simply taking money now and not spending it to put it for another part of the future. The government forces you to actually do this 
every single day or every single paycheck. And they do that in the form of social security. If you've ever noticed when you go into your check, if you look, it'll say social security tax. What the government's doing is they're taking a little bit of your money now, they're putting it into an account for you. And at age 65, they're gonna give it back to you at certain, certain increments, increments that allows you to retire and have a, an income later on in life. Your ability then, your ability to, to achieve financial freedom is then simply your ability to put enough in investment to get enough of that return on investment that then pays that then pays for your particular lifestyle. Now there's multiple things, we're gonna keep this video short, we'll have other segments to talk a little bit about what that means, but that's the general concept. Now, so this is, this is the path, and let's talk about on my personal path that I took to reach this particular status, okay? Very simple, I started off as an employee, and this is that, that time between really about, you know, I would say, you know, the 18, 20 years old, when I really got kind of a decent job, was actually going through college, and I waited tables and so forth. Let's actually call it 25, where I graduated, I went into the construction industry, and I was making about $44,000 a year. I was living paycheck to paycheck, I had no money left over. I was waiting on Fridays just to simply, you know, see if I had enough money to pay for the electricity and the rent and stuff like that. And I had a girlfriend at the time and there was some ability for them to chip in. But the idea is we were both living to paycheck to paycheck. I had credit cards because I was overspending. I had a rental. I was a, 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 a rent that I was actually probably a little bit higher for me. The point is, is it wasn't a great life. And if I'd have kept down that particular pathway, I could tell you that I would have always been living paycheck to paycheck. From the grace of God, thank God, the housing market it crashed, okay? And I was laid off. I had to go find another job. I started another position in a sales organization, okay? In that sales organization, I earned some traits. I earned a little bit. I earned, understood marketing. I understand affiliate marketing. I understand the spread. I had an amazing, amazing mentor that basically taught me a lot of what I know. And what I knew from being an employee, from seeing this person as a private small business owner, was that my boss, um, as a business owner was making a tremendous amount of money. And I knew, you know what? I want that life for myself because I saw what his life was and I was inspired to go to achieve it. So what I did is I started and I said, you know what? I'm gonna start a side hustle. I'm gonna go into work nine to five, right? But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knowledge and my skills and sort of my apprenticeship and everything that I've gained and I'm gonna go start something on the side that's kind of similar in nature. What, what skills do you have that you could leverage right now to start a little bit of a side hustle. I want you to think about that, okay? So what I did is I went in and I started a self-employment. So what I did is I moved from this direction as an employee and I moved into here into self-employed. Now, where a lot of people get mistakes though is they go, hey, I've been, I've been a plumber my entire life and I'm tired of it, I'm quitting, I'm gonna go be self-employed. The issue is when people make that jump, they lose that security and that's very frightening for people. So what we recommend is don't, don't do that. Don't lose that security blanket. You can work your clear nine to five every single day and then you can pick up a side hustle. We call it your five to nine, okay? So that's what I did. So I was earning, earning a little bit of, of income at the sales organization. I was actually doing well and I was cashing checks of about $15,000 or so. I was bringing in about $150,000 to $180,000 a year. Think about about that, um, you know, that's a pretty good amount. But for me, I knew that there was something more because I started to understand this idea of business and investing and, and so forth. Again, I had an amazing mentor and a really great circle of influence at that particular time. So I went and I started my self-employment job and I went and from five to nine every single day, it was in affiliate web marketing and I was actually started to bank money. This self-employment um, only took me so far. It actually, because I was spending even more time because I had to build the websites out, I had to build partnerships, I had to do all this extra work to be a self-employed person that while I was making a little bit of more money, I thought like most of us out there and I said, you know what? This isn't, isn't gonna work. I can't possibly work from nine o'clock in the morning till in that case, 12 o'clock at night and continue on that. That's no, that's no life for my family. I'm never gonna get a girlfriend. I'm never gonna get you know, married. I'm just not, just not gonna have any fun. That's not the life. I wanted money and I wanted some extra cash flow so that I could go do whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, right? That was the concept. Well, I couldn't do that because I was working two jobs. I was basically just working all the time and I made a little bit more money over here than I did there, but at the end of the day, 
I was still in the same spot. I was just in that cycle. So I said, you know what I got to do? I have to actually hire some employees. I got to I got to scale this thing, right? And that's a pretty easy concept for most people to understand. So what as I did is like, you know, I'm going to hire somebody. I took every single little bit of the profits that I had from my self-employment and instead of paying myself, I said, you know what? I'm going to go all in. I this is key. I have this security blanket, okay? To do what? Pay bills okay so this security bank paid my bills so i knew if i went in nine to five all the time my bills are paid i didn't have to worry about it right my bills are paid so what this income is this ends up being extra income and it was a lot of it so when you have extra income and i don't need money to pay my bills I can take the leap and that's critical if I had left this job and went to this job I would be less I wouldn't want to risk this money because this is the money that I paid for the mortgage this is the money that I paid for food electricity whatever it is right I, I would need this money so by having this as a, as a side hustle is a critical critical piece okay so what did I do with this money as a side hustle I said I'm gonna take every single dollar and I was quite honest when I when I hired my first employees you should see my ad it was funny and I was like listen I'm a, I'm a self-employed uh, entrepreneur I'm making pretty good money this is the money I'm making at this particular time I would like to hire you and I'm gonna pay you X amount of dollars and if you do really well and you follow what I'm doing basically you'll make that kind of money too it was very simple and i got a couple employees that raised their hand and they were basically college students and they said listen i'm making like nine dollars an hour over here at the mcdonald's or it's whataburger actually was in it was uh, where, where we went to school and you know i'll go there you, you know you'll pay me 15 16 bucks an hour like that sounds great so i hired my first couple of employees but basically what i did is i took this cash that's right here and i moved it up to hiring employees so and again i was able to do that because i still had this place to pay my bills now here's the crazy things and a lot of people they do this and then they go there but the key of moving to this particular shift okay was that i had this money coming in which means that i couldn't stop this income because i needed this income to pay for that income until my employees or were self-sufficient and they made enough profit okay later on down the life i started with one employee and they equaled, they started making money, right? My one employee started making money. You know how much money they made? You got it. They made it the exact same amount of money that I made over there. And that was pretty cool because what I did here is the principles that we just talked about. I, let's say I was making $20 an hour, right? Uh, up here, down here in this principle, I then made $60 an hour because, you know, I was self-employed and I didn't have an employer or a company taking the profit off of it. So when I hired this employee, I was actually a little, little, little uh, optimistic. And I said to them, I said, listen, I'm actually going to pay you, you know, $25 an hour. This is an example $25 an hour. That employee made $60 an hour for their work. So I had the spread there of, $35 an hour that I was keeping. You know what was cool about that is if you look at these two numbers, by myself, I was making $20 an hour. As self-employed, I was making $65 an hour. And I'm only making $35 an hour as my employee. So I'm actually making less money than I than I did as when I was self-employed because I'm hiring another employee. But the issue is that this $35 an hour spread that I'm making is just money in my pocket because remember it's just because of the the employee so if you think about where i am right now established in life i, I make a 20 dollars an hour at my nine to five job i'm going home and i'm working a five to nine okay and i'm making 60 dollars an hour and that feels pretty good but i realize it's not going to get me to where i want to go so i go over here and i hire employees and those employees are making me 35 dollars an hour but i only got one of them but that seems to work now, I'm kind of getting worried here because I'm super, super risk adverse, right? That means I don't like to take chances on stuff. I'm very, very cautious of people um, and their time and, and you're hiring employees. And I want to make sure that they feel secure and all that kind of good stuff, right? And I'm first in entrepreneurship. So I take this $35 employee and what do I do? I just take this to 50 people. That's simple, folks. So I slowly hire two people a week, two people a week two people a week, 
two people a week and I continue to keep building and scaling and building and scaling, I'm gonna let you do the math. Hopefully you have a calculator if you're taking this course, but this, this $50 right here, just take $50 times $35 times 40 hours a week and you can run the math and see what kind of numbers that looks like. Because remember, here's kind of the cool thing and this is why this works, right? Is I'm $20 an hour, I'm 40 hours of work here, I'm probably another 20 hours of work here, right? Working five to nine and so forth. After I get off the point where I can service my customers, I'm now working nine till one in the clock in the morning doing paperwork and doing all those little things you need to run this particular business. But the cool thing is, is this particular business, you know what I have? I have 40 more hours at $35 an hour. I'm making more money than I am here, over here, and over there. And that's the transition, folks. Now, for some of you, um, you're thinking like a lot of people remember as an employee they're like hey I'm gonna go be a self I'm gonna go be a self-employed I'm gonna quit this job they lose that security you don't want to do that and in some people when they stop self-employed they hire businesses they go hey I'm gonna stop doing that and that's a problem because if you don't have the cash flow to keep feeding that business to get a really solid foundation in that business, it ends up getting really wibbly wobbly and you can lose that pretty quickly. And with business comes tremendous op uh, liability because you're getting a lease for a building and you have to buy all this equipment and you're getting cubicles and or whatever your business is. If you're a plumber, you're buying vans and supplies and materials and you have uh, worker co compensation insurance and all those types of things. You're hiring an accountant during this time and all those types of things. So you need this income self-employed to keep feeding that business you're feeding that business think about you're taking the money here to invest right so what happens now I'm sitting in a life and I'm like hey I'm, I'm doing pretty good I'm cash and checks just to put it in perspective over here I'm in the one A's I'm cash and checks I'm over here making okay money but to be honest with you my time here gets a little bit disrailed because this ends up being pretty big that I'm actually kind of just spend a lot more time up here than here and I'm kind of okay with it I'm making you know, decent money up here. This is only bringing me an extra 20 or 30,000. But this bad boy right here, this bad boy, I'm cashing checks for $70,000, $80,000 a month net in my pocket simply because I got those employees that I'm earning the spread off of. Now, for a lot of people, as an employee, you go, if I run a video and I say, hey, for you to become successful, all you have to do is go start a business. And people are like, yeah, that's easy for you to say because you have money, right? And you can go start a business. I don't have money to start a business. That's simple, guys, because you, your mindset has to be right because you're thinking that I'm gonna leave a job and I'm gonna go start a business. I didn't have money as an employee over here to go start this business. Absolutely not. I didn't have this. You know how much this cost? This was this ended up being hundreds of thousands of dollars in cubicles and leasing and all that kind of stuff. I didn't have this money. But what I do have early on in your career, you have time, right? So you have time. What time is your ability to accumulate income. So don't leave your job. You accumulate income doing your side hustle, whatever that is. And we go into later in this course what those different side hustles can be if your current job can't be a side hustle. But you take the side hustle and you allow the side hustle to slowly build the business. Now, that means, of course, you're, you're putting it to your mind. I got to work nine to five and then I got to get off of that and I got to work five to nine. Let's be honest with one another, guys. Your ability to become successful is your ability to be uncomfortable. If you are unwilling to be uncomfortable, that's perfectly fine. If you're like, I don't want to work nine to five. I don't want to work five to nine. I don't want to work. That's perfectly fine. We're going to talk about it here in a second and in, in the next in other videos. You can still become a millionaire just working a regular nine to five job doing certain types of things and, and working with compounded interest to get you a nice nest egg that is 65, you can be living a pretty good life. You don't have to rely on just social security from the government, right? But, but that's not what I wanted for my life. What I wanted for my life is the ability to do whatever I want, whenever I wanted for as long as I wanted. And I wanted to do that now. I realized something that's very stark in my mind, basically from losing my father um, going on about, about three years ago, that life is short. And at the end of the day, I know the number one thing that people think about at the end of their life is I wish I should have, I could have, I should have sent more, and I just wish I had more time. At the end of life, 
everything tastes better. Happiness is abundant because you appreciate every single thing in life. In your regular mundaneness of your life, the day in, the day out, you, you just, it just, it, it, it just, it was, it wasn't for me. I knew that I wanted something different in my life. I wanted to be, you know, abnormal, not unique, just different. I didn't want that pathway, so I suffered and I took and I ate crap and I put the work in doing this, spending a tremendous amount of time. And the money that I made here, man, I can't tell you how many times I went to go do something, failed try to do a website, failed, try to do this thing, failed, spending hours and hours and hours and hours of time learning the things that I needed to know, huge growth, huge growth right here to get this business. And when I started that business, the amount of stuff that I had to learn for taxes and how to, how to just operationally run a business, how do you hire a manager to, 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 run, it, to, to run your business because you're not there all day because you're, you're still doing your side hustle, how do you juggle all of those things? A tremendous amount of pain. However, fast forward seven years later, I don't work at all. I don't do anything. I do what I want whenever I want for as long as I want and that's powerful. So when you start to make money and I'm making all this money, then you become, you have two major issues. One, you get too much money and that sounds like pretty crazy, but this is, this is how money goes, folks. You make a million dollars and actually, I'm gonna go ahead and write this in red. Taxes, taxes, you make a million dollars, taxes is gonna take about 40% of that. If you're in some states, it's actually much more. Just think about it. All you have to do, you don't believe me, go, go into Google and type in 2019 or 2020 tax brackets. Look at the tax brackets of people making a million dollars or more. That million dollars that you have, is you're in your net and you're putting 40% of that away. You have your federal income tax, you have your social security that's in there, you're gonna pay your employment tax, you're gonna pay um, your state tax, and not to mention, it's in a different video as well, but you're gonna pay taxes on every single thing you purchase. So I was like, man, I'm paying a crap load of taxes. When I paid my first tax bills when I was in here and here, I was paying more taxes than I was actually even making here, and I knew that was unstoppable. So I started to dive in, I got some mentorship, and I was talking to people like, hey, what, what else can I do? So when I was taking this, this money, but what I did is I said, you know what? I don't want to go do another business because diversification is key. And I have a nine to five. At this point, I'm not doing self-employment. I got a business, but I need to start diversify because this business was silicone and it, and it mattered. It, 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 it was, it was with like the financial industry and so forth and it mattered because those things go up and down. So there's some vulnerability there. And I was like, listen, I got to diversify. I got to have multiple streams of income and that's important. So what I did is I took all of this and I started putting it into investments, okay? And the reason why I started putting it into investments is because I was tired of the time that it took to do this and do this and I had to break free and I knew that I didn't want to continuously work from nine till this case, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning every single day and I needed something different. So what you do is you move, you, once you start to get that money, you start moving into investments and what that investments were for me, um, if you follow any of the YouTube or TikTok or whatever, you already know, you already know I'm going to put out there because it's absolutely super, super near and dear to my heart but it was these little bad boys right here. Rentals, folks. So I started taking all my, rental, all my investments and I put in a couple of different things. Stocks, right? Mutual funds, all those, you know, those types of things. Diversifying there of a multiple different, different types of assets in real estate. And the reason why I put it in real estate is because it offers a tremendous amount of tax, a tax um, a benefit to that. One thing I learned going through this entire journey, what I say to you that I would have done things completely different, I learned one key thing going through this entire process. When I look back at the last seven years of my life, there's one thing that I'm like, if I would have done this differently, besides just starting earlier, if I'd have done this differently, I would have probably at least three to four X my net worth what I have now. And that is investing with the concept that taxes will rob you of your returns on investment. So what happens is when I was in these stages, I was paying just the nominal rates, 34% on my tax, 40%, the, the state tax that we have here, six and a half percent. 
just getting robbed. If you think about um, conceptually right now, if I said to you that you're putting your money into a 401k in an IRA, right? To go to any financial advisor, an average return for a 401k or an IRA is what? I want you to Google search that, put that into something, say, what is a 401k, what is an IRA, what is an average return? What is the average return for a mutual fund over the last 30 years? If you pull up the S&P 500 index over the last 30 years, the average rate of return is about 8%. If you go to a financial advisor and just test one, just call one up and say, hey, I'm looking to invest in some stocks, what kind of returns are you getting? They will tell you that if they're if they're not a scammer, they will tell you that average returns are gonna be you know, 6% if you're not very risky, 8% is pretty good. Maybe you can achieve 11 to 12%. Now you're thinking to yourself, well, that's decent because that means your money is doubling about every eight to 10 years, right? But what we don't do, huge principle of the rich, is we don't consider the percentage of our income that we're paying on taxes. Think about that. When you go pay taxes, you're paying 20% of your income off taxes. So you're making 8% off your IRA or 401k, off your money that you put into it. You take $5,000 out of, your, out of your, your income and you've put that into an IRA and you're getting 8% return off that. But that income, you're losing 20, maybe 34%. And if you had state taxes in there, as much as 40% of your money is vanishing simply because of the government. The government, however, gives you very clear instructions on how you can avoid or pay less taxes if you invest in certain things. One of those things is real estate because the government is not in the business of providing housing for people so they'll give you a benefit. So anyway, so I started putting my money into real estate and when I did that, I was able to then depreciate that. Whole nother topic, we'll get to it, but able to depreciate that. Those rental incomes then provide you a cash flow and that's easy. You buy a property, you rent it out. The difference between what the mortgage is and what the rent is, that income is what you put in your pocket. And as you start to accumulate that one, two, three, four, to 20 or 30 doors or 30 houses, um, you can imagine that you can end up being in a spot that you can live and go do whatever you want. If you are an employee, you will forever and ever and ever exchange time for money. If you are a self-employed, you're still gonna exchange your time for more money. <clears throat> As a business owner, you can take your, your yourself out of the picture, but your toe is still in it, but as an investor with my rental properties, I can leave right now for five years and like clockwork, because I can hire a property management company to do the leasing and the fixing and all of that. I can leave and I will just get routine money over year over year over year. You're able to do that. This is how I did it. There's a few other ways that you can accumulate this type of, this is one, just one of the example that we cover in the course. There's many other ways that you can accumulate wealth. What I've learned is along the way, instead of instead of going this pathway where you're an employee and then you go and then you go to self-employed and then you go to business and then your business then eventually gets money and you start to this investment and to build that cash flow. Instead, if you didn't want to be self-employed, you didn't know, as an employee, you can start this right now. And that's what I should have done differently. Remember when I was talking to you about taxes. If I had done this immediately, I would have paid less taxes. If I'd have done this, taken my self-employed income and put a little bit of it here and a little bit of it here based on certain limits that I'm able to do, I would have paid less in taxes. And when this income went up here and started making money, I would have done here, I would have paid less in taxes. And if I would have done it the correct way and invested with taxes in mind and thought out the entire process before starting on my journey, before starting on the journey, what I would have done is this million dollars over here, which is what my 2019 just looked like. If you saw the previous video to this, this right here would have been virtually zero. Now, 
Don't get hung up. If you want to pay taxes, you can pay taxes, okay? I understand there's people that are very wealthy and they don't pay a whole lot of taxes. They're also some of the biggest job creators out there. We're not going to get into those politics. If you want to pay taxes, all you have to do is just write a check out and pay them. If you want to pay taxes, you can do these things and just don't take the tax bracket that the, guy, the government, the IRS has on their website that they're giving you because they want you to do these particular things. You, you, you don't need to. You can pay your taxes. But the point is is that forget a million let's say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year or fifty thousand dollars a year every dollar that you take and that you push to the government is a dollar that you're not pushing putting into your nest egg of an investment to build wealth I want you to go to a website comp uh, just to type in Google G O O G L E Google put in compounded interest calculator if you go down about three or four in the list, I use one that's called calculatestuff.com, something like that. I want you to go into your, take your, take your W-2 that you have for this year, and I want you to look on and see how much you paid in taxes. It'll say federal withhold taxes. How much is it? Is it 10,000? Is it 15,000? Take that number, take that number and cut it in half. Then take that number. So if it says 10,000, cut it in half. Now you have 5,000. Take that 5,000. I want you to put it into the calculator. And if you invested it in just to a simple um, mutual fund. So you're going to put $5,000 as far as your annual contribution, right? Put it at 8% uh, return on investment. Or we talked about VOO, VOO, S&P index fund. And math that out. Let's just say you did that from the age 30 to 65 for 35 years. How much money did you rob yourself because you were living a life where you weren't even thinking about a simple concept of taxes?